Tsinghua University. I am a visiting PhD student here. I have stayed here for two months. So the topic of today's seminar is sparsity based dynamic hand gesture recognition using micro doppler signatures. Uh, here is my outline. My report contains five parts. First, let us see the background. Dynamic hand gesture has been regarded as an effective approach for human-computer interaction. For example, uh, by using dynamic hand gesture, a uh, TV viewer can send an uh, instruction to smart TV by uh, at a distance. Since hand gesture has growing application values, it has attracted the interest of more and more researchers. Uh, in the past years, varieties kind of vision-based techniques have been uh, proposed to recognize dynamic hand gestures, but these methods are sensitive to the ambient illumination condition, and the hardware may be expensive, especially when the uh, hand gesture is very fast. But in, con in contrast, radar-based system uh, can capture dynamic hand gesture with fast speed, and the hardware can be cheap. Uh, the most important a uh, radar can work in different uh, conditions of night. So, a uh, radar based system is uh, very meaningful for uh, real, uh, in, in real applications. So, in this work, a uh, specially based method for dynamic hand gesture recognition is proposed, and the micro Doppler signatures. Are, in actual, are extracted by compressed sensing techniques. And uh, experiment uh, results show that the proposed method obtains higher recognition accuracy than the existing techniques, including uh, principal uh, component analysis and uh, singular value de decomposition. Now, uh, I will introduce the experiment campaign. The real data were collected in Beijing, and uh, um, the radar is a uh, continuous uh, wave radar. The carrier frequency is 9.8 GHz, and the distance between the antenna and the hand is about uh, 0.3 meter. Uh, neck, uh, human and uh, a laptop, and uh, the antenna was oriented directly to the hand. And uh, in this research, in this work, uh, four types of dynamic hand gestures were analyzed. Uh, they are shown in this picture. Uh, 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 gesture A is a rotation, hand rotation. Gesture B is a corning. And just as we see, is uh, uh, snapping like this. And uh, just uh, D is uh, flapping like this. Uh, here is the spectrograms of these uh, four gestures. We use short time Fourier transform to get the, to obtain the spectrogram. And uh, we can find that the time frequency behaviors of these gestures are different. So uh, it's possible to distinguish them by their time frequency properties. And another important uh, uh, observation is the energy of these gestures uh, are distributed in limited area, just in this area. So this allows us to use sparsity-based technique to analyze them. Now here is the block diagram of our 
a gesture recognition system. First, the data were collected by radar. Then, the gesture, the signal segments corresponding to gesture, uh, is detected and located by signal processing techniques such as energy threshold. And uh, then the data uh, is aligned to synchronize the time information. Now uh, we come to the most important uh, step, filter extraction and uh, classification. In fact, these two steps uh, are the main contribution of our work. Now, uh, I will present the detail about the filter extraction. Uh, as, presented, as presented before, most energy of the gesture signal is distributed in limited area in time frequency uh, domain, which implies the sparse properties of the received signals. This allows us to use sparsely based or compressor sensing techniques to extract microdoper uh, features. Uh, quote simply, if we assume the received signal is sparse, we can use a weighted sum of k time frequency atoms to represent the uh, signal. Uh, for example, the receiver signal Y contains maybe 500 points. Now we can use K time frequency atoms. K may be equal to 20. So the data dimension uh, is obviously reduced by compressed sensing. Here is the mathematical model of uh, uh, compressed sensing. We use matrix to express the relationship. Wrong. Uh, y is the n multiply one vector represent a receiver single uh, column vector, and uh, psi is a uh, n multiply um, m matrix is the time frequency dictionary. In this work, GAMBO dictionary is employed, and uh, each column of this dictionary is a GAMBO atom. Like this, uh, X is the sparse representation. It only has a limited uh, numbers of non-zero elements in this figure, and uh, enter is the measuring noise. Is there any question about this? The single, the dictionary, the sparse vector, and the noise. Can you tell us what the GAMBO dictionary is? I don't know what it is. Uh, GAMBO dictionary uh, contains uh, here uh, M atoms. Uh, this, uh, each atom is uh, like a uh, Base, base signal um, and the spectrogram of the base signal is like this so it's the components of the time frequency uh, domain and uh, each, each atom has uh, two important parameters parameters that is the time time shift and the frequency shift Now let's continue. Uh, keep this formula in mind. Uh, we have the receiver signal, the dictionary, and we want to compute the sparse, sparse vector. Here, the OMP algorithm, which is very uh, useful in compressor sensing, is employed here. We use this algorithm to compute the sparse representation, uh, that is x. Now, once x is obtained, we use the uh, parameters selected by OMP algorithm 
to uh, to describe the micro Doppler signatures. Uh, for example, uh, X I one is the first non-zero element in X, and this non-zero element uh, is corresponding to uh, to a column in this dictionary, and then this column is corresponding to a couple atom. This atom is corresponding to time, a time shift and a frequency shift. Now we use the time, time shift, the frequency shift, and the amplitude to uh, to uh, to represent the micro Doppler signatures like this. This is the first non-zero element, the second and the case. Now we can say uh, uh, y uh, n point signal is reduced to three plus k uh, uh, features. So this is the facial extraction. Here we show the results of facial extraction. This is the spectrogram of a gesture signal, and this is the time shift, frequency shift of the selected atoms. We can say the location of the selected atoms indicates the central locations of the time frequency trajection, trajectories of the gesture signal. So after the future extraction, we can undertake the classification. Before classification, we need to generate a classifier. And uh, here we use the k-means algorithm to cluster the central, the central feature of each gesture. For example, we have five training samples for each gesture, uh, for each gesture. and uh, the selected atoms of all these samples are plotted here. We can see the selected atoms from different uh, samples, but the same gesture do not coincide with each other. That means there are some noises. So we use the k-means algorithm to reduce the noise. After, re after the k-means algorithm, we can obtain a central, we, I call this central future. So once the central future uh, are obtained, we use the nearest neighbor classifier to determine the type of the gesture. Here is the uh, tested uh, signal, and uh, this is the facial of this signal. We can compute the distance between the facial and the central features, and the shortest distance <coughs> indicates the type of the gesture. Here is the four central gestures. Gesture A, gesture B, gesture C, gesture D. Okay, now we can we have gone through the whole process of our uh, recognition algorithm. Here is the result. First, we need to confirm the assumption assumption about sparsity. Once we assume the signal is sparse, but it's just a uh, assumption, we use now we use the real data to confirm this. Look at the left picture. The x-axis uh, represents the number of uh, time frequency atom keep this uh, formula in in mind. K means this the number of the atoms, the x-axis. And the y-axis uh, means the approximation error or the reconstruction error. That means y minus the weighted sum. We can say that uh, if we choose, uh, we say that 20 atoms to represent y, the error can be as low as uh, five percent. So we confirm the echoes of the dynamic hand gesture are sparse, and it is reasonable to 
assume the sparsity is uh, 20. Now, uh, we will uh, test the performance of our method versus the sparsity in the on the on the right finger the axis is the k and the y axis is the recognition accuracy we can say that as the uh, sparsity increases the accuracy increases this is because the more items we selected the more information we kept and now we compare our method with the existing method, including PCA, principal component and analysis, SVD, singular value decomposition, and uh, centered and features of a search program. And uh, the result, results show that our method have, has a higher accuracy. And here is a confusion matrix, and the results show our uh, accuracy is higher than 97 percent now that's the result here we can come to some conclusions first we're taking advantage of the sparse properties of the dynamic hand gestures equals and uh, compose comprise the sensing techniques are employed to extract the micro doppler signatures and uh, the pro post method obtains higher recognition algorithm than the existing method. In the future research, we will aim at applying the proposed method with another database. In, in, this, in this experiment, the database contains uh, 200 signals, and we will expand the database and with more types of gestures from four to more. And uh, another way is to apply this method, the sparsity based method, to another set other kind of human activities, such as working or run or other kinds of activities. Uh, that's my report, and thank you. Looking forward to your comments.